You ready to get started? Hmm? Are you ready to get started and everything? Yep, okay. I'm ready. Um, my name is Heather Kilmer and today is January 12th, 2009 and I am here to interview Richard Parcell and do you remember where you were and what went on during your mind on December 7th, 1941? December 9th, 1941. Uh, yes, I do. I uh, was born and raised on Long Island, New York. And uh, I know, I think I found out about it when I had gone to uh, an errand for my mother. I, don't, I wasn't at home. Someone else told me about it. I was doing mm -hmm. an errand for my mother. I don't know what, exactly what it was. Um, how old were you at the time? I was, uh, 16. Mm -hmm. Um, as a growing up as a kid, do you remember anything really about the Great Depression during the 30s, or were you uh, too young? It's hard to remember. Yeah. Uh, we hear more about it now. Yeah. I did, we, uh, I'm not sure that I realized how bad it was. Mm -hmm. uh, my father was a very conscientious man, and he always mm -hmm. seemed to find work. Yeah. Uh, uh, I really don't. Yeah, I, so really don't I really don't yeah. uh, remember it being that bad. Yeah. So you, know? you guys weren't like hit by it as bad as other people then, I take it. I I think so. Yeah. yeah. It might be that we were poor, but we didn't know. Yeah. Because you know we had uh, we lived in an area where there was. Uh, it was all farms, yeah. you know, and we may have gotten the, the food from the farmers. The farmers. Yeah. Look, we were farmers, so. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, what was it like growing up as a kid on Long Island, and what type of things did you used to do as a kid? Oh, it was terrific. <laughs> uh, we were always outside. Mm -hmm. We didn't have computers or electronic games. And we, uh, Every day we ran until we dropped, you know. Yeah. <laughs> we played a lot of, it was a lot of open space, so we played uh, mm -hmm. standlock baseball and football mm -hmm. and all that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. Kick the can and ring Olivia, games you've never heard of. Yeah. Um, during your high school, were you a good student or like? I was a, a good student in some subjects, yeah. a fair student in other subjects, and not a very good student in English. <laughs> But uh, mathematics and uh, uh, physics and chemistry and stuff mm -hmm. like that, I was pretty good at. During high school, what do you picture yourself doing after you got out? What did I picture myself yeah. doing? Yeah, what do you think you were uh, going to do? I really never thought too much about what I would do after I got out of high school. Mm -hmm. And uh, of course, all that changed when the war came along. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um. What made you really decide to enter the service at 17? Uh, I know everybody was entering the service. Yeah. Uh, uh, I, I don't know specifically why. I guess you could say yeah. you know, it would be nice to say patriotic, but yeah. <laughs> you don't know whether that's the right word. Yeah. But I was anxious to go. I was anxious to go. Was your family behind you on your decision? Yes. My mother, I was young and my mother had a sign for me too. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, did you uh, meet your wife before the war or did you know, did you like know her before or did you meet her during the war? We grew up together since we were five years yep. old. <laughs> um, do you remember a lot about like your training for the Navy? Yes. I. Uh, Sometimes this gets a little emotional for me. I don't know why. Mm -hmm. uh, <clears throat> yes, I went to, when I went to, <clears throat> you asked me about training, right? Yeah. I went to, like everyone else, I went to boot camp. Mm -hmm. And uh, after boot camp, I went to uh, Advanced Naval Aviation Technical Training Center mm -hmm. in uh, Northern Oklahoma. Yeah. Um, what was like your job training, like when you went there? What type of jobs did you do? When I went there, uh, I was, my training was to be an aircraft mechanic. Mm -hmm. Before I went in the service and while I was still in high school, uh, and even before, my father uh, 
always had a shop on our property and he always was a mechanic and I used to help him. Even when I was 14 years old, I used to help him. And so I knew a lot about mechanics, so when you take that uh, test in the Navy to yeah. see where you're... Mm -hmm. See you are higher up. See where you are, and that, that, that's what I did. They sent me there for... Because uh, mm -hmm. I know a lot of people that have entered the service now, like that are my friends that graduated a couple of years ago and stuff. Was it hard for you, like, getting used to not being with, like, your family and your loved ones all the time? No. Mm -hmm. Did um, you keep in contact with them? Oh, yeah. yeah, okay. yeah. Um, how many years were you in training before you actually went over to the uh, About eight, six or eight months, about, mm -hmm. yeah. So it wasn't that long, No, of... no. Were you anxious to get over to the war? Were you anxious to get over to the war? I was anxious to get on a ship, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, what was your favorite part about joining the Navy? My favorite part? About joining or about being in? About being in? Yeah. Uh, being on the ship. Yeah. yeah. So I take it you like like the sea and things like that. Then? So I take it you like the sea and stuff, like you like being on the water. Yeah. Well, uh, I was on an aircraft carrier, so mm -hmm. yeah. whatever young boy wants to do is yeah. <laughs> play with airplanes. Yeah. Um. What was your favorite part about being on the ship? Yeah. Well, uh, I was on an aircraft carrier, so whatever young boy wants to do is play with airplanes. Yeah. My mother was terribly in love with me. Yeah. So she was really yeah. had a lot of time than my father, I guess. Mm -hmm. um, well, what they would do, uh, they would drive, take a drive, mm -hmm. and if they found a serviceman on the street and he was going somewhere, <clears throat> they would take him. Mm -hmm. That's like they felt obligated to yeah. do something for those in the service. To, like help out. <clears throat> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, where were you mostly located when you were in the Pacific? Uh, oh. <laughs> uh, we were mostly up toward the Japanese homeland and mm -hmm. Iwo Jima area, Toka, Okinawa area, but we would have to go mm -hmm. south uh, about every three months or so to uh, uh, re refurbish the ship with supplies mm -hmm. and ammunition and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. and. Uh, we, this is a little side note, yeah. uh, when we was out going out toward the forward area, we were in Hawaii for, oh, I guess about six weeks or two mm -hmm. months training uh, pilots who never landed at night. Yeah. And uh, because we were there so long, the rest of the fleet was calling us the queen of the pineapple fleet. <laughs> Um, what does that like mean? Mm -hmm. Like, what does that mean? What do they mean by like the queen of the pineapple fleet? They were just kind of uh, because they were really up already where yeah. the fighting was going on, and we were back here training pilots yeah. to land at night, so mm -hmm. we had a real and in Hawaii, you know, yeah. even though it was you know the war was going on, mm -hmm. but uh, it was like we had a special break, so yeah. they, it was like a put down. You're queen of the pineapple yeah. fleet. <laughs> um, while you were on the aircraft carrier, would you like do on your spare time? Do you work? Guys weren't like actually. Believe me, things. there wasn't much spare time. Yeah. Uh, Reveille was uh, like two o'clock in the morning. Mm -hmm. The first flight would go off four o'clock, mm -hmm. and we'd be up there till yeah. ten o'clock at night. So mm -hmm. the spare time was sleeping. Yeah, was but but there were days, you know, yeah. like uh, when the weather was bad and stuff like that. Yeah. And just hang around and talk. And, well, we used to play football. We had a football. We'd throw mm -hmm. a football around and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. What would you and your like buddies talk about on the aircraft carrier when you had time to? I don't know. Really, I really don't remember yeah. having conversations where yeah. I, that I could uh, even think of. Uh, yeah. But I did, have, I did have a good friend and uh, we hang out pretty good together. Mm -hmm. You still keep in contact with him now? Or? No, he, no, he came once. He lives in California, and I live on Long Island. And he came to see us once, long after the war was over. Mm -hmm. And uh, I spoke to him a couple of times on the telephone, and then yeah. it just ended. Yeah. Um, did you ever come close to the enemy, or did you see like Cos Cosmokazi? Like, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. What was that like for you, seeing those? Well, you would, uh, 
you have to imagine it, 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 that the whole sea is full of ships. There's mm -hmm. a task force. There could be it could be three or four carriers and a, a lot of other ships. And uh, when the kamikazes would come out, sometimes at open hour, mm -hmm. uh, there would be 200 of them shot down in one day. Mm -hmm. And uh, when the kamikaze started his dive, if you saw him going over that, we wouldn't be concerned. You'd be more concerned mm -hmm. about the area where you are. Yeah. If you saw one go into a dive near where you were, mm -hmm. you would pay more attention. Yeah. But uh, most of them got shot down. Yeah. Um. They, they were they were the, I think they were young kid pilots that yeah. really didn't know how to fly. And they, they gave them any kind of an airplane that could fly. Mm -hmm and uh, they were trying to do their job, and most of them failed. Yeah. They were very successful, but most of them yeah. failed. Um, and on April, in April of 1945, was the Battle of Okinawa, mm -hmm. and you took place in that, mm -hmm. right? What was like your ma major task? To what I did? Yeah. Uh, I worked on the flight deck, mm -hmm. and uh, when the planes came in, they were court part, what they call the arresting year. Mm -hmm. And I was a director to direct the plane forward. I was, I stood in the, the arresting, I was the first one in the arresting year, an airplane landed very close to me. Mm -hmm. And I would start him up the deck and he'd be passed up the deck and finally parked mm -hmm. in, in, the, in, the, in the bow of the ship. Mm -hmm. Did you ever feel that um, the Allies wanted to have a victory in the Battle of Okinawa? Or did you think it was going bad or good? No, I never, I never thought it was going bad, mm -hmm. but Okinawa is a, the battle that was really lost in, in our history because the atom bomb came so shortly afterwards. Uh, more people, more Japanese were killed on Okinawa than the two atom bombs put together. Mm -hmm. There was over 200,000 Japanese killed on Okinawa. <laughs> And uh, the American fleet took the worst damage ever in the history of the Navy. Over 35 ships were sunk, over 350 of them were so badly damaged, most of those had to be junk. Mm -hmm. And there was talk of uh, a congressional investigation as to uh, what happened at Okinawa, so it was so bad that so many Japanese were killed, 200,000. And when a bomb was dropped, the yeah, atom bomb, mm -hmm. all that was took a back seat, yeah. so it never, it never came forward. Mm -hmm. But it was, it was the largest air, sea, land battle in, in the history. Mm -hmm. um, what was your like, position on the atom bomb? Were you for it or were you...? Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, they, the Japanese at Okinawa had uh, thousands of kamikazes, mm -hmm. boats, submarines, airplanes, and a thing they called the Baka bomb, B-A-K-A, I think it was. Mm -hmm. And it's actually a piloted bomb. Mm -hmm. It has wings and a man flies it. He's dropped by a bomber and he flies it. Mm -hmm. They had thousands of them. And Japanese homeland, they had hundreds of thousands of them. Mm -hmm. uh, millions of people would have been killed if they ever had to invade uh, Japan yeah. proper. Mm -hmm. um, do you ever have like harsh feelings towards Japanese people now? No, not at all. Um, and you went on like the homeland parts of Japan, right? On, um, Excuse me. Did you ever go on like the homeland part, the homeland part of Japan, like on Hanoi? Yes. And uh, there's something I don't understand. They call it Akio. Uh, oh. Army of Occupation. Mm -hmm. uh, it probably has something to do with uh, protocol. I don't know yeah. what it is. So we actually went ashore mm -hmm. uh, just a few weeks after the war was over in mm -hmm. in uh, Tokyo and mm -hmm. Yokohama. Mm -hmm. So were you there for when the Japanese surrendered, or were you out on Tokyo Bay? We were when the, when the surrender came. Mm -hmm. Oh, you mean when they signed the, when they, we were uh, in Tokyo Bay, yes. Mm -hmm. What was it like in Tokyo Bay? Like, what did you like see and everything? 
Tokyo Bay, the entrance to Tokyo Bay, there's two uh, concrete columns, mm -hmm. big concrete towers. Mm -hmm. Now you've probably never heard this, but it said Kilroy was here. Mm -hmm. You know Kilroy was here? Um. It, w it was something that the kids would put up. Aside. Kil I don't even know who Kilroy was. Yeah. It, Kilroy was here. Well, in, in the United States, they put it. Mm -hmm. And here we are. The war has ended about two weeks, and there's two big towers. It says Kilroy was here. Mm -hmm. So some marine or sailor or somebody yeah. went up there and painted that sign on those two <laughs> big towers. Um, did you see a lot of, like, devastation among yes. Uh, yes. Japan? Yes. Like, what did you see? There was nothing left. Nothing. Uh, and, and what I saw of uh, Tokyo and Yokohama, the only things you would see is maybe a chimney or a fireplace or a safe mm -hmm. or some solid structure. Everything else was totally, absolutely flat. Mm -hmm. Nothing. Um, did you see like the Japanese people? Like, all over the Japanese people were very humble. Mm -hmm. uh, you hear about them uh, not surrendering and, you know, die before I would surrender, and they did. Mm -hmm. But when they did surrender, they totally surrendered. They were, oh, you hear stories about somebody on an island, one or yeah. two guys. But as far as uh, the people and the military, mm -hmm. they were very humble. Mm -hmm. uh, when we walked down the streets of Tokyo or Yokohama, you wouldn't, you wouldn't go too far from the ship, but they would bow to you. I mean, they were, yeah. they were defeated and they were uh, nice about it, I thought. you know. Mm -hmm. they, did you ever like meet like any high commands in the Navy, or? I met uh, Admiral McCain. Mm -hmm. Did you ever meet Admiral Nimitz, or? You know? uh, well, we at the last part of the war, our ship was the uh, flagship mm -hmm. of the fleet, and the flagship always they call it the flagship because that's where the admiral is, and he makes his mm -hmm. decisions from there. Uh, so being at the Admiral was there, we had other Admirals come aboard uh, the ship. Uh, were they around a lot, or were they like more like uh, back at home at, the Admiral McCain, McCain was around a lot. He was always, mm -hmm. when there was flight operations going on, you could always see him up on the mm -hmm. thing there. Um, did you ever meet like during the, the battles and everything, did you ever like want to give up and just go home? or? Were you all for staying? So. No. Yeah. Um. What type of things would go through your mind when like battles were going on and you would see like people being hurt and everything? What was going through my mind? Yeah. Like, what do uh, you think about it all as such? When young kid? when uh, when things are going on, mm -hmm. you're just concerned about the things that are going on. You may think about it afterwards. Mm -hmm who got hurt or who got killed or something like that, or who didn't come back with an airplane. But when it's happening, you know. Yeah. Were you ever wounded or no. did, you, did you ever know anyone who got wounded? Yes. Mm -hmm. Were they your close buddies during the war or just uh, people you saw? I, knew, I had a friend who uh, was pretty close that got killed in an airplane. We had a lot of crashes. Mm -hmm. On an aircraft car, there's an awful lot of crashes. Mm -hmm. And he was killed in an airplane crash. And, mm -hmm. I was the first, he actually flew right out of the airplane and I was the first one there when he was laying on the deck. Mm -hmm. What's like one certain thing that you remember most about the war and being on the Pacific? Well, we had over 20,000 landings when I was there. Mm -hmm. And uh, sometimes uh, the airplanes would come back and they weren't able to drop their bomb and the bomb was hanging on the bottom of the airplane. Mm -hmm. And when they would catch that cable and stop the airplane so short, the bomb would come off mm -hmm. and go bounding down the, down the deck. I remember a lot of those. <laughs> um, did you ever think like that, like your aircraft carrier was going to get hit by like, the opposing enemies? Or? Well, well, you're concerned about it. We, we never had any real, real close Call. We had the ship right behind us was yeah. was hit with two kamikaze, but mm -hmm. uh, we were never hit at all. Mm -hmm. That's, we had the admiral on, and they took good care of us. Yeah. <laughs> um, did you ever like think about like 
like nowadays you find it hard to watch like documentaries on like the war or is it just easy for you? No, I would watch them all, but Mom wouldn't. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, like during like Tokyo Bay and everything, was there like more Americans at Japan at the time or was it mostly Japan? Like citizens and everything? No, there wasn't there wasn't many Japanese citizens there. Mm -hmm. When uh, I don't know whether it was on the day of surrender, the day of the signing of the treaty, I don't know if we were actually in Tokyo Bay or when this happened, but at one point very close to the uh, signing, might have been that day, maybe not. Uh, we had maybe 10 or more carriers, 12, maybe more than that carrier. I don't know exactly how many carriers the task force was put into two groups, but they may have had 10 or 12 carriers. And every plane that was flyable mm -hmm. flew in formation right over Tokyo and the Tokyo Bay. There, there's over a thousand airplanes. You just can't imagine mm -hmm. a thousand airplanes look like they flew over as a some sort of a symbol. I don't know whether mm -hmm. it was uh, a salute or what? But. Yeah. Um, like when you guys traveled from like in the Pacific, how many like carriers was like track like you guys travel with? Oh, there would be. Oh. Uh, I'm probably going to guess that at least fifty or more ships. Mm -hmm. You have destroyers, cruisers, battleships, and aircraft carriers. Mm -hmm. There could be five or six aircraft carriers in mm -hmm. in. Uh, in one group. Mm -hmm. You know, we see an aircraft carrier get built today, it takes five or six years or more. Mm -hmm. At that time, they could build an aircraft carrier in one year. Mm -hmm. Did you ever have to like repair anything on the ship or on any other ships? Or? Well, we had, uh, I didn't have to repair anything on this part of the ship or any other mm -hmm. ship, but uh, we had uh, tractors on the ship that we used to uh, tow the airplanes. Mm -hmm. I used to work on them once in a while. Yeah. Did you ever have to work on any airplanes? Or? Before, before I, uh, if I come out of uh, school, mm -hmm. that in Norman, Oklahoma, before I got on the ship, I went to Quonset Point, Rhode Island, to, uh, they called it TBM Engineering. TBM was a growing airplane. And at TBM Engineering, we worked on airplane. I worked on airplane engines for a while. Mm -hmm. But then, when the opportunity came to get on the ship, I volunteered for that. Mm -hmm. Did you ever were you ever friends with like any of the pilots that flew the plane? Oh yeah, yeah. Um, do you still keep in contact with them? Or? No, but I keep in contact with uh, ten other men that were on the ship. Mm -hmm. Do they live close around, or do they live all? Over? Do they live close? To no, they live all over, all over the country. When's the last time you like were in contact with one of them? We uh, there's uh, they have a reunion every year, mm -hmm. and we haven't gone to the last two, I think, or, or maybe the last five. I guess we haven't gone to. I'm not mm -hmm. sure. And but uh, we used to go to uh, the reunions to see them. Mm -hmm. And uh, the ship was in commission for almost 30 years, and with a crew of. Uh, 3,500, you can imagine how many men, yeah. thousands mm -hmm. and thousands, and uh, there's very few of the original crew left, there's only a handful. Mm -hmm. Do you, when you guys like meet up and everything, do you guys like talk about what's going on in life now, and or do you guys like reminisce on like what happened during the war? Both. Yeah. Look about both, about yeah. what happened and the, and the new technology that, yeah. they, uh, of course they're all, uh, still in love with airplanes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, do you agree with the war that's going on in Iraq today, or do you disagree with uh, that? <clears throat> I think something needed to happen, I'm not sure. Mm -hmm. You know, it's easy to, to uh, after we've been doing it for a while, to make mm -hmm. comments on it, but something needed to be happening. Yeah. And, and the same now with Afghanistan, something needs to happen, who yeah. knows what, you know. Mm -hmm. um, what do you think, like that, my generation is growing up needs to like get out of like the war, out of the war that happened that you were in? The war that happened? Yeah, the World War II. 
Like, what do you think uh, that we should take out of it? You need to understand the ferocity of it. Mm -hmm. uh, you see a war today, and it's like you see it on television. You see a few bombs here and a bomb over there, and then it's you know a couple more days. A few they talk about so many rockets. In, in one day, they have fired more ammunition and bombs and torpedoes and stuff than in one day than has been going on in the Iraq War for five years. Yeah. I mean, like the Battle of Britain, the airplanes came by the hundreds. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. it's just incredible. Uh, how, how big of a difference is, like, how, would you say that the World War II was, like, is that more, was more known about than the Iraq War, or do you think the Iraq no, War was I more think, talked about? No, I think the, the, the Iraq, I think people, your generation probably know more about the Iraq War, surely, than they do mm -hmm. about World War II. Mm -hmm. uh, during the war, did you ever realize that what well, was happening to the Jewish community over in Europe, or you just had no clue what was going on? Never knew what was going mm -hmm. on. When did you, when'd you first learn about that? Uh, well, after the war, you know, mm -hmm. you didn't know about that. Were you already home, like, from the war, or when you heard about it, or are you still? You said busy? what was happening to the Jewish community. Mm -hmm. uh, something needs to be learned there, too. It's true what happened mm -hmm. to them, but also uh, the Russians, mm -hmm. Uh, Hitler exterminated yeah. just as many Russians and Christians yeah. as he did the Jewish people. He did, he, uh... Because that's actually a point Mr. Rosal points out, pointed out to us that it wasn't just the Jewish people, yeah. it was yeah. just because he wanted the, he believed in like the Bolshevik yeah. like yeah. thing. So. Um, do you ever like, have nightmares or anything about like what happened there or no. so you're like pretty much at terms with what happened hmm? so are you like at terms with what happened over i'm missing something you're saying oh were you are you like in terms of like what happened over in the pacific like do you agree with everything that happened yes do you ever do you do you ever disagree with any of it or you pretty much backed it all up what? Did you agree with all of it? Like you didn't disagree, there was something you disagreed with? Like that occurred, like anything that mm -hmm. happened? That's pretty much all I have to ask. And do you have any like stories that like stick out in your mind about the war? No. But I can tell you a story. I have a granddaughter in the Navy. Yeah. You do? How old is she? She's uh, Rebecca, 30, 31. She'll be 30. 30. Mm -hmm. She, uh, I recommend the Navy to every yeah. young person. Mm -hmm. uh, Rebecca uh, graduated from high school under one of those alternative, she did, you know, she, she had to go some kind of special, to, yeah. not as a, and uh, she was a poor student. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'll make this short. Mm -hmm. <laughs> she, uh, the first 18, she, in fact, she said from boot camp, she sent me an email. She says, Grandpa, I made a mistake. <laughs> These people are mean. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, the, the first 18 months in the Navy, they kind of see who you are. Yeah. They put you on it 18 months, and that's your job for 18 months. And Rebecca did a very good job, and she did, uh, she was on a destroyer mm -hmm. the first 18 months. And she yep. just, she just took to it. And she did a very good job, and she did a lot of extra work in her spare time. Mm -hmm. And when her 18 months were up, her captain recommended her for Navy Justice School. Mm -hmm. And she went to Navy Justice School and graduated. I don't know if you ever saw the, the television series JAG. I, my grandfather watches it, but okay. I've never really watched so it. So she's a, she's a, now she's a, after 10 years or 11, she's in, she's a first class legal man. Mm -hmm. She does legal work for the uh, United States Navy Special Warfare Processing. Yeah. <laughs> so she's come a long way and the, yeah. the Navy was good for her and she's mm -hmm. absolutely, totally different person. Yeah. But she was overseas in Bahrain. And yeah, she went to Bahrain. Did she like it over there? Or? Did she like it over there? I, well, she didn't like it on the ship because yeah. uh, it was too much. Mm -hmm. 
Have you ever gone back and visited over in the Pacific or? No. no. Would you like to if you could? That would be nice. To see like how Japan has changed and everything. Well, they, yeah, they really, their, uh, their economy has, you know, up, up until this point anyhow, has been one of the best. In, yeah. Well, that's pretty much it. Thank okay. you for your time. Well, thank you.